All right, folks, something a bit different in this video. We have swapped the mountains for the coast. So what we're doing is the Berwickshire Coastal Path, which runs from Coburn's Path to Berwick-upon-Tweed. We left about half an hour ago, and we've just passed the cove there. And we're on our way to Pease Bay. Here, yeah, five already run across the river. It actually looks quite doable. <laughs> I'm a fiver down now. No! <laughs> you owe me a fiver. Okay. Smooth move. All right, I'm a fiver down, and uh, we've cleared Pease Bay. And that's an hour on the clock with four kilometers as well. So the plan tonight is to get to St Ab's Head and pitch somewhere on the cliffs. And then next again day, we'll head to Berwick-upon-Tweed. Um, if you're wondering why I've got a pair of glasses on my head here, these are my driving ones, and I never noticed I had them on. <laughs> That's not a different look or anything. Through the Gap of Doom. Through the Jaggy Gap. Jaggy Jag Boom. Gap. You stuck, pal. It's all right, there you go. There you go. There you are. You all right? Is that your gang hut? All right, folks. Uh, just further back there, we took a wee detour to St Helens Chapel. You can make another detour to Sicker Point as well, but it's half a mile in and half a mile back out again, so we're never bored. Uh, we've came a wee bit inland, followed a farm track, and now we're sort of heading back towards the coast. Back on the cliffs. Right, this section here is a tad bit more wild. All right, folks, we made a mistake. We were going down towards the cliffs. We're just following a path, talking nonsense as usual. Now we're trying to get back up to the road where we should be, and I'm bog deep in bracken. That's what we get for slavering nonsense. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. She fucking pebbles. Ah. Alrighty, folks. If you've got time, it's well worth a detour down to Fast Castle. However, we've got less than two hours daylight, so we are boosting on. We've not acquired any water yet for dinner, so uh, Dowlaw Burn is around here somewhere. It's an awful lot of farmland though, so I'll be getting boiled and filtered.
See, if you run, they will come after you. Just purely for curiosity. They're curious beasts. And a couple of calves as well. Right, we've got about three kilometres to go before we reach St Abs, just over there. And we've got an hour of, well no, actually 50 minutes of daylight to play with. So I think we're good. Just a wee sting in the tail. We'll go down here and then we'll have to boost up here. Aye, slow walkers indeed, struggling. Yes. Kev, can I relive the Cape Raft Trail? No. Aye, go on. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> the lighthouse is in sight. Right, old folks, it's half seven and the sun is set and we're just going to find a pitch. Not too close to the cliff, but just enough to get a nice view in the morning. Uh, sun rises at 7, so hopefully we'll get a nice view out to the North Sea. That is the plan. So what I'll do is I'll bring you back once the tent is up. Right, well it's half eight, the tent is up. I've got the scarp with me. I thought it was going to be windy. Turns out it's not too bad and I'm just waiting for my dinner to rehydrate and I'm going to get some scranimo. I'm coming back to bed. Later Kev. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to enjoy the evening in Kev's tent. <laughs> Come on then big boy, I'm ready for you. See you in the morning. See you in the morning boys, take care of. Oh, good morning campers. That was a good sleep. It is 20 to 7 and sunrise is in 20 minutes so let's have a wee look outside, see what it's like. Move to the beat, yeah, move to the beat, move to the beat, yeah, move to the beat, move to the beat, yeah. Right here, we're back on the move. We set off at 8 o'clock. So we've got plenty of time to get to Berwick upon Tweed. I think yesterday it must have been about 2 o'clock we set off, so at least today we should get in Berwick for about Aye, one, two o'clock I reckon. That's the uh, village of St Abs came into view. They actually used St Abs in one of the Avenger films. And it's quite funny, they used a bit of CGI. And it looks more Scandinavian than Scottish. Morning. Good morning. Check the size of these bad boys, by the way. Right, half an hour into the walk since striking camp and we've reached the village of St Abs. And watch it don't fall down these steps.
Righty oh, that is cold and bay, done and dusted. Next stop, Imo. I'm on the statics. Look at that, they even had caravans back in the day. Right folks, you're going to have to use your imagination here because there's not really much left of the fort at all. A couple of cannons over there. Righty folks, we are uh, in Eyemouth now and we're on the lookout for a cafe for some scran. Got some local inside knowledge and apparently Mackay's is good. So we're on the hunt for Mackay's. Alright folks, we are at the Waterfront Cafe. Kev's inside ordering some scran. Yes. What's the time Kev? Scran o'clock. Oh mate, that green dress suits you. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. What about that? Hiya pals. Right at this point we come off the road and cut across the golf course and hit the coast again. Four! Right, that is the golf course negotiated without any significant problems. And we're back on the coast. Right, this section here it's a bit boring. We're just sort of cutting round the edge of a field. But the last village in Scotland is right there, Burnmouth. Got a good view of it here actually. I'll just flip the camera around. Yeah, so we're going to end up down here and along back up. And we'll see where it goes from there. So back in the day, Burnmouth used to be a bit of a, a smuggler's hotspot and you can see why, it's like well off the main road, well below the cliffs. So yeah, it would definitely be a, a smuggler's haven. This actually feels like you're going into somebody's back garden, but it is the route. Oh, well, technically, it's somebody's back garden. <laughs> Built in around 1760 by a smuggler merchant called John Robertson. <laughs> England, Scotland, England, Scotland, England. And it shouldn't be too far now to Berwick upon Tweed. Got another four or five kilometres after that. Right. I've just checked the bus times. It's the Borders Bus Service 253 and there's no more today. The last one, leaving Berwick, was uh, back in 2, it's now 25 to 3. There's no trains today going to Dunbar, so I'm going to ask Kev if his missus will pick us up. Otherwise, it's going to be an expensive taxi. <laughs> Right yo, we've got a lift sorted for Kev's missus. She can't get us straight away though, so that's fine. It gives us time to dunder along and finish the walk. Maybe even have time for a lag or shandy. Lesson learned though, if you're using public transport, plan ahead. 
<laughs> in our defence, though, this was very short notice. We were actually going to do the Cheviots, but it was like an 80 mile round trip to Kevin's. And just with people panic buying fuel, we just thought, right, we'll just do a walk straight for Kev's house. And that's how we ended up here. Right, to folks, I believe the little lighthouse at the end of the pier is the end of the Berwickshire Coastal Way. So uh, I'll bring you back on the pier. Almost there, folks. Almost there. That is 28 and a half kilometres. 600 metres of ascent and that took us 7 hours and 40 minutes Bloody hell, what have we been up to? And there you go folks, it's a wrap, catch you in the next one Cheers!